Welcome to the Evening Review. My name is Ohane Klache, and joining me in studio is my colleague Jesse Jackson Kauretha, who will be unpacking his thoughts on the just concluded Namibia Premier League. Welcome to the Evening Review. Thank you so much, OJ. Um, it is indeed a pleasure being here, and good evening to the viewers as well. Um, we've seen um, African stars um, put in an impressive uh, performance um, and uh, be crowned um, champions. Um, how would you sum up um, uh, the activities of the league? Um? I think I think the, um, the season started off well for for African stars as a football club. Um, I think they made uh, the right choices in terms of signings and in terms of uh, the structure of the club, um, especially as they brought in very experienced players and. Mind you, they took most of these players from the other big teams that were participating in the league before it came to a standstill. Mm -hmm. And I think that was one of the most important things. Yes, they did take a couple of players that were also playing abroad before, and, but these players didn't have playing time anymore. So I would say that um, it was indeed a good thing for African stars to to actually sign these players and as you can tell they also believed in a kind of professional setup although our football is it's still early to speak of that but they really did push that agenda and you could see by the performances of the club their social media status and all that and that's why they were crown champions at the end of the day. But one cannot say the other clubs didn't try as well. We did have clubs like Blue Waters. We did have um, clubs like Life Fighters or Kahanja United and the rest of the clubs that actually survived um, this season. You can say that these clubs gave it their all. They also tried to match up um, with the caliber of African stars, although stars was just um, a bit further ahead in terms of the plans and what they had. And you would understand because some of these clubs actually um, probably complained in the beginning of the season that they were not ready. They were rushed into starting the league at that time. And maybe that played a huge role in terms of who to sign and money as well. Mm. So I would say that was one of the stuff that actually stood out is the fact that probably the clubs were struggling financially because we know that Dep Marine Namibia as a sponsor didn't come full out because they felt like it's a trial season and this is what we are going to give and see whether the league will be able to continue till the end because mind you we have had um, periods in the past and only recent as well recently where l the league and football in this country has always been disrupted by fights and all that so i think um, they were trying to actually just make sure that they are on the safe side give the teams a trial and all that um, speaking of teams that didn't not perform well like the likes of black africa mm a very big team that got relegated is also something um, sad for, for, for many of the fans and football in general because BA is a very big club and Eros as well, Eros has survived for a while and they, they, they also went um, as well as citizens but if you look at this club one would say they're probably the clubs that did not invest enough this season in terms of staff, in terms of players. It was really a struggle. Mm. Um, and then, um, are you satisfied um, with the quality of football displayed? I mean, coming off the back of the fact that um, the league, we didn't have a league for some time and we've had to have players now here just come back. Fitness levels obviously being a question and playing, lack of playing time obviously also being another factor. Um, the quality at the start of the season was not that good um, we all know why because many of these players have had not been playing a really regular competitive football except from playing some reserve football here and there and 
you can name it all, age made footballs mm. and all those stuff. So a lot of these players really didn't have enough. And also one would say that they didn't have enough to prepare time to prepare for the season. So the quality at first for me was not that good. But as the season went on, you could see that some teams were picking up um, while the others also remained a bit poorly. But overall, in terms of how the season was and how the quality was, one would say that we need to improve. Um, there, needs, there need to be more done in terms of preparations, in terms of the coaching, in terms of everything. I mean, like... If we want our football to be back up there, I think one of the most important things is the entertainment on the field in order to get the fans. And credit to the fans this season, um, especially from some clubs, they were really turning up for their clubs. And as a club, you need to give the fans what the money or the value to what they paid for mm -hmm. in terms of what you display on the pitch because you really don't want to come to a stadium and watch a boring game. So I believe that um, that still needs to be improved. But we would say that we understand the situation that was on the ground. And sometimes you just can't bash the players. You know that they need to get into gear. And then they need to get used to the systems, back into the systems. And we hope that it won't be disrupted. Mm. Uh, now, um on a sad note, uh, Namibia pulled out of, uh, of, of, of the joint bid with Botswana to host the, the AFCON in 2027. Um, how, does this, how, how, how will this um, affect um, us going forward? Um, you know, and how, how does this uh, play into the image of Namibia? Or at least uh, the credibility as far as Namibia is concerned? Um, I think we all knew that uh, going into this bid was a risk. Um, and... And I think it's a risk we took. Uh, at the start, I, uh, um, I, I think many people were really skeptical about the whole thing. They felt like Namibia is not ready. We don't even have um, a stadium that is fit or conducive enough for accredited calf football and all of that. So many people were skeptical about that. But we were hoping that um, in terms of that, it could probably speed up uh, the process of re re rejuvenating um, some of the stadiums, uh, renovating them and stuff like that. So that was one of the things that many of us probably felt that probably if we are in the bid, it could fasten up that because as we know, the national team plays outside mm -hmm. the country. But in terms of the cancellation process and all, I think it came down to, as an embarrassment to, to a country um, and in terms of uh, bilateral um, relationships with actually the country that we were trying to co-host this tournament with, I think that touched that as well. And in terms of future bits and stuff like that, I think it will take a lot for us as a country to win the trust of any other nation mm. if we want to bid for that tournament again or for any other tournament for that matter. So I think it was really something that hit the country hard. Uh, but it was not a surprise at all because we knew the situation on the ground. We know the budget um, of sport in this country. We know that um, in terms of funding we know that sport is the stepchild um, of the government and so it was really going to take a miracle for us to to complete everything i think it was a beautiful dream but i think an impossible one as well um i, I want to go back to the issue or the matter of african stars um mm. now uh, by virtue of them winning the league um gives them entry to, to compete in the Champions League. Mm -hmm. um, what positives uh, do you see coming out of uh, African stars participating in the Champions League for local football in general? Well, the question is first, will they participate without stadiums? But of course, um, there is a really a high chance, a high possibility that they will. And if they do, I think this will just bring back a little bit of 
dignity and pride in terms of our football. I think um, we have lost that a lot. Um, many people around the world, if I mean, if you listen to, to programs, um, you could hear people bashing us and all that. So having a team from Namibia back on the African continent competing at the highest level in terms of football, I think that will motivate um, the country. And it will also give some of the younger players that are aspiring um, to go forward in their careers, just something to believe again that if I probably play at this level, at this lower level, I might be able to enter in the league and I might actually be able to go and play um, at the biggest level, uh, which is CAF, uh, which is also a very big opportunity to be scouted, um, especially for some of the players. I know players are very loyal to their teams, but you can also be loyal to money and to where you want to go. So I think um, that would be a great, it will just give Namibia something to think about in terms of um, just improving our facilities and football as well in general. And I think the clubs as well, the rest of the clubs could also be motivated um, to take that step and it will raise the bar in terms of next season and in terms of competition in the league. Mm. Mm. Um, we touched on the issue of, of, of stadiums and we are, we, are, we, are, we are in a situation where Brave Warriors has to play um, their matches in South They have to play their home matches in South Africa. Um, are you satisfied then on that front um, at efforts or at the pace at which government is moving to fix um, the, 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 the soccer stadiums or the stadiums in general and at least have, have our um, national team um, um, play, 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 play at home again? Um, I wouldn't be saying that I'm satisfied with the pace at all because um, if you look at uh, the period or the length at which the stadiums were actually um, declared unfit, um, it has been quite a while. So for me to say that I understand um, we have had um, officials speaking and stating that no, um, if an extra 50 million has been put on the budget for the stadiums and what and what has been done. I think every Namibian right now wants it done and not just done by the mouth. Uh, so you, you, you would literally want to, to watch your team playing um, that is on their own home turf it is actually always something very beautiful and nice to see. But now, I mean, even if you look at um, the kids of the current generation and all of that, I think they have not had the opportunity recently to, to literally just even experience of watching the Brave Warriors at home. I think those uh, that, that came to know what, what it is in the past three, four years. So it is that where you really wonder, um, I think the pace is, 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 is below par and um, we're really moving um, at a chameleon speed, I would say. Um, we, need, we, need to really, we need to really push up, step up and improve the stadiums uh, because we 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 are on the verge of qualifying to the africa cup of nations and still not having a conducive fit stadium for me is just it's just not acceptable and i, th I don't think the pace that uh, the government is moving or the ministry of sport per se that deals with the stadium um is is enough. I don't think um, they are doing actually enough in terms of that and we need more. I applaud the efforts. You can never say that um, there are no efforts. Obviously, we have seen the efforts in terms of the independent stadium from where it came and where it is. But you would want, you would want um, the effort to really continue and you would want um, Namibians to be proved that the government is really standing behind their backs. And that goes the same with the Sam Nioma Stadium. We would really want um, that stadium also to, to come back to standards uh, because it's two of the stadiums that we probably have that can host a competition.
And then um, you've mentioned the issue of brave warriors um, with one foot, potentially one foot in um, the, 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 the Africa Cup of Nations. Um, what do you make of our chances to qualify? We do have a very good chance. Um, it's very solid, but um, I think at the time that we beat the Cameroon, um, a lot of people really got excited and um, felt like that we already have qualified. I would say we do have one foot um, that is in the tournament, but we have not entirely qualified because a, a, a defeat from Burundi um, can twist things as well. So, um, and we are playing Burundi away from home. So, I think that we do stand a good chance, but it is not a done and sealed deal. And um, Colin Benjamin, the coach of the Brave Warriors, also mentioned, mentioned it in a press conference a few days ago, where he said that, look, fine, we do have a chance to qualify, but it's not a done deal. And that's a message he has to put across towards the players, mm -hmm. towards the entire stuff that um, we need that one final push. But it is hard to say that um, Burundi is a team that is capable of spoiling the party. Uh, it's a strong team, but I think if Namibia plays the way it has been playing in the group, especially against the likes of Ka Cameroon, which is a strong team, mm -hmm. I think um, our chances are high. And mind you that um, it is really a lifeline for, 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 for the teams like Namibia and Burundi in this group, um, due to the fact that there were only three teams available, knowing that um, the likes of uh, Kenya was or disqualified, I think. so. I think this is a big chance for Namibia and I would say we do have a 85% chance of qualifying, leaving the 15 for disappointment. Last question, just to conclude, um, our league has restarted and we have uh, the Brave Warriors coming off um, the, the win with Cameroon. Um, what does this tell you about the future of Namibian football? <sighs> the future looks really Right. Um, I would say that for the first time in a few years, one feels like um, we are hurting or we are headed in the right direction. And one thing that you must really, really um, be careful of or that you want actually to take place and to take place in a thorough and correct manner would be the election of a new leadership to our football because right now we are saying that things are taking up shape well but it is because of the FIFA normalization committee that's running football at the moment but the FIFA normalization committee only t has till um, towards the end of the year before they can pave a way for a new leadership so things are currently good but what you want is assurance, is um, stability, and that can actually be done by the new leadership. And the other thing is that um, I think um, the Dep Marine sponsorship towards the league as well, um, it, has to, it has to continue. And so I basically believe that it will continue under the normalization committee, but you still want that transition to be smooth in terms of leadership. You want really people to take football by heart and you want anyone that's um, having ambitions to run football and to run for positions to have it by heart and not by coming in to disrupt uh, the current process that has been taking place. I know I said I had one more question, mm -hmm. or uh, that was my last question, but um, one more. Yes. And um, no I would like you to rate uh, the performance of the normalization committee between one and five and then give your explanation why. <laughs> I'm putting my uh, neck on the board there by rating. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's difficult to rate, um, to rate something if you 
as a journalist um, where I'm seated sometimes to just say that this is one out of three, one out of five, because there has been ups and downs in terms of their leadership as well. There has been a lot of complaints coming through as well. So I don't think which ones were justifiable. Some were, some were not. So I would, I would really give them a, one, um, a, th a benefit of a three in terms of out of five because they have done a brilliant job. But obviously, the job that they had, why I will still not give them a five, is the fact that they were supposed, that is, to also bring in a new leadership in the time that they had. Of course, you would understand that probably it was a short time, but one would say that um, it could have been done and we could have had a new leadership in place at the moment. But apart from that, I think they have really done well to keep the situation balanced. And f football kicking off, because that was the most difficult thing, I think that was um, that the task just to have even a sponsor on board mm. was very difficult because a lot of companies needed convincing. So that's why I would say one out of three, but there is still more. They still have a few months and we do expect that they have professionals, people with great knowledge, people that have run big companies. So we hope that um, they can give football a forever dream and not something that will stop in the middle. Thank you very much for joining us on the Evening Review. Thank you so much. That concludes the Evening Review. Have yourself a pleasant evening. Welcome to My Dot NA Cars, your ultimate destination for everything automotive. I am your host, Diana Mosta. Teamwork makes the dream work, right? Discover the latest models, innovative technologies, and expert insights from our passionate hosts. Learn essential maintenance tips and get exclusive behind the scenes access to the automotive industry. Don't miss my dot NA cars on NTV every Thursday at 2100 hours. Tune in and ignite your passion for automobiles. Another exciting episode of Iron World Talk. We will at least be here and tell you what we are first. You are going to come back. We are so excited to be kickstarting your morning with the entertainment. Everything was happening mm. during this past weekend. Yes. Exciting news. Wow, no, she was killing it already. In my opinion, I don't see anything wrong with him serving the full term. As well as keeping you informed on the issues that you need to know happening in and around our country. Good evening and welcome to Sunset News. After the break, we take a look at the sports. We bring you economic indicators, tomorrow's weather and sports. I am Aina Raiza Kweong. Welcome to What's Cooking, where culinary passion meets expert insights. Somebody must really want to cook and want to cook good food. Immerse yourself in the bustling world of professional kitchens as top chefs create mouthwatering dishes. Join us for in-depth interviews as our host explores the experiences and expertise of our guest chefs. Don't miss out. Tune in to What's Cooking on NTV every Friday at 2100 hours and let the culinary adventure begin.